Hi there. In this video, I will cover rest of the two plots, which is correlation matrix and box plot chart. All right. So if I come back here in the tableau, this is these are the two charts, the histogram and uh, the box plot. That is what we covered. Now let's come back to the correlation matrix. So correlation matrix is nothing but the extension of the scatter chart that you showed but uh, since it has a lot of different variables the visualization becomes easy to understand whether variables are linearly correlated positive or negative or is there any sort of relationship present apart from linear relationship into the variable so what i can do is um, i can simply select let's say uh, profit and uh, profit over here and uh, then sales and sales as you can see I'm selecting all of these same variable in both rows and columns sum of uh, quantity and and like now it has created a matrix kind of a structure so we have uh, qual quantity and profit you know metric we have sales profit metric and then we have profit profit metric similarly we have sales sales metric sales quantity metric and similarly profit 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 sales and profit quantity so this is a simple uh, representation of correlation but uh, correlation matrix but it's it's really not uh, in the form because it has to has a proper scatter chart so like i suggested in the previous video we go into the analysis and uncheck this aggregate measures and now you can see it very meaningful uh, that first of all this this particular section will always be positively correlated why well pretty much we have already guessed it but if not the profit is we are checking profit with profit so it has to be linearly correlated similarly sales we are checking with sales quantity we are checking with quantity so since both and x, y, y x is the same, that's why they are linearly upward correlated. But if you see sales and profit, you know, we see some sort of a positive trend, both on the little bit on the positive side and on the negative side. But if I see profit with quantity, uh, it, it is not showing any sort of trend. It is showing us uh, straightforward, straight growth, not upward or downward, but a straight growth. Uh, so... So what it is indicating that uh, irrespective of uh, what the quantity is, the profit is not changing much. So this way, if you have other different variables, say for example, even the discount, say for example, discount here and discount here. And what I'll do is from standard to fit width. And you can clearly see uh, whether there is any sort of relationship so discount is also not showing any uh, signs but uh, uh, it is what it is indicating that on zero percent discount is high followed by 20 percent discount but in case of 60 percent discount with the sales the sales is really high over here so not a, a positive but a little bit of uh, a linear trend not a not so linear trend what it is showing but it's kind of a very intuitive way uh, by which you can really analyze so for example quantity and sales we see a lot of quantity over here but when the sales is increasing the quantity is becoming less so maybe it's like a little bit linearly downward that uh, for higher value sale the quantity is less because maybe that's that's what so for example we are purchasing a higher electronic good then obviously we will purchase just one quantity but here in this case it is like five different quantities which have been purchased so it shows uh, a little bit of near negative for uh, linear correlation and where that is what it is expected and in that way you can explore uh, other um, relationships between the variables by plotting like this and create the by creating the scatter plot metric now let's go ahead and create the uh, last chart which is box plot so what I'll do is I'll select the profit and go into the show me and here I am not getting the so it has uh, 
zero or more dimension, one or more measure. So let me select probably sales quantity. So in case of quantity, it is showing me. And uh, if it is not showing you, then what you can do is like in this case of profit or in case of sales, what it basically looks at the aggregate measures. Once you go into the analysis and remove the aggregate measure, that's what uh, I just tried to do. And uh, by that, this this particular option will be enabled. So in sales, I just create it. So this is my scatter plot, and I can even select one dimension uh, to better represent it. For example, region. So these are my different scatter plot. It's not properly plotted because there are a lot of outliers, a lot of values which are uh, you know going beyond so what I can do is remove this and come back to profit and select the uh, scatter plot so again not a very meaningful but uh, what I can do is not even with the slice it will work I can try and change it uh, maybe let's say discount to get a proper figure and yeah, in case of discount, you can see it is properly coming. And uh, what it is having is this shaded area. This particular value is basically median. And uh, this is upper whisker and lower whisker. So what it basically upper boundary or lower boundary and this is whisker. So what it basically has, as you can see, upper whisker, 60% of values are coming in the upper whisker, upper hinge, median, lower hinge and lower whisker. And any value which is above the upper whisker is basically treated as the outlier. So what you can see is the distribution of data. So for example, in case of central, there is there are uh, comparatively higher discount uh, when you come to the uh, east, west or uh, south, which is pretty consistent. So that's the, uh, you know, as a, uh, the interpretation that you can get. Also, um, there are some outliers, both in all of these different cases, which are these. It's up to you whether you want to include the outliers in your analysis or not. Sometimes you exclude it because it influences it. Well, and, or sometimes you do the treatment, probably, you know, make it under a certain value or average or based on what your analysis is saying. But the idea is that uh, you get this analysis uh, to to really understand how your data distribution is and now it is clearly indicating that in central uh, we are giving comparatively higher discount than any other one and we can then look into this treatment and but we what we know is the central value will going to inflate uh, whenever we are doing any data modeling or statistical modeling so that's about uh, the box and plot and uh, correlation metrics to visualize and get the idea from the data and I will meet you in the new video, the new topic.